Hello everyone, welcome to Beyond and Above, a show where we bring to you people who are doing beyond and above in their careers or their talents. Now today we have a very exciting guest. Normally before we start the show, we normally go through people's personal achievements and their CVs, but for this particular guest, it was quite difficult because she's, she's achieved so much, you know, the CV is bulky. This person has been the managing director of Airtel before, managing director of Ecobank, managing director of Zambia National Tourism Board, and she's the former chairperson of, the former board chairperson of Zanaco. Now, let me not uh, spill in all the beans. Let me introduce our guest. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Florence. Thank happy to be here <laughs> thank you for having us in your home and thank you for inviting me thank you for coming all right thank you so much um so today you know we, we are blessed by your presence because once someone watches this interview they'll be inspired to you know break the glass ceiling so we'll just start with um the past so that we can get to the pre to the present moment um who would you say Charity Lumpa was before university? What were her hopes and dreams and ambitions? Charity Lumpa is. <laughs> I don't think I've really changed. I was a young lady, young girl actually, before university. A Fatimanian. I went to Fatima Girls Secondary School from 19... Oh no, so long ago. 73 to 1978. That's when I finished what we called from five then. So I am the second born child of Rachel and Gideon Lumpa and the first born daughter out of six. So we have one gentleman who's my older brother and then I have four siblings, my sisters. But when I look at my dad alone, I think I'm at number seven out of maybe 15 children. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I come from a very big family. And I'm a, I'm a single parent now, or before university. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too many things to talk about. <laughs> so I was a, a, a young lady inspired by my mother, Rachel, the late Rachel Lumpa, who was the first uh, female, in fact, executive director of the Family Planning Association of Zambia, as it was known then. And then um, thereafter, I came to Fatima Girls Secondary School, where I did my Form 5, and from there I went to the University of Zambia. Hmm, interesting. So by then, during that moment, did you imagine that this is how far you would get? You would get? In fact, I imagine that I'll be much further than I am right now. Okay. <laughs> All right, interesting. Yeah, you see, um, my mom died uh, uh, a tragic death uh, when I was 11. And she was my role model, and the things that she did, I just used to admire her so much. And I said, wow, I want to be just like her when, when I grow up and maybe even better, you know. Yeah. I, I like the way she dressed herself, I like the way she was like very corporate in her appearance. I enjoyed watching her carry her briefcase and I said, hmm, the first opportunity I have, I'm yeah. buying myself a briefcase. <laughs> when did you buy a briefcase? I think I bought my briefcase just as soon as I turned 21. Awesome, wow, you actually went to buy it. I actually did, because that's the picture I have of a professional woman. Mm -hmm. Well-dressed, very composed, looking professional with her documents, everything in place. So I, I like that about her. Yeah. So when when we when she died, we used to live in at a farm in Minsundu, mm -hmm. and uh, it was like a ten acre farm or five acre farm. But when she died, we had to go and live with my grandma in a place called Pamozi in Indola. And then it was a site and service area. It was just starting, so it didn't have many amenities. And my mom had been building a house for her mom then and it was incomplete at the time of my mom's death and because of the way she died and the conditions surrounding it we were forced to move from the farm into that house and that house had no running water it had no electricity it wasn't plastered we didn't have our own bedrooms we now had to um, use braziers from using a stove you know, using korobo, you know what korobo is? <laughs> yes, actually, I do. To read and candles yeah. and stuff like that. So it was really, really rough. 
and so at a very early age i knew both sides of the of life let me put it like that the hard side and the really good easy side which i can call was middle class well to do and so at that early age i realized that <laughs> i don't belong here uh, there is no way i'm going to belong in this situation yeah. This situation is temporary to pass, but what I aspire to be, I aspire to be my mother. With all her achievements, with the way she raised us in a beautiful home and stuff like that. And that is what has been driving me. Amazing. That's really amazing to hear. It's very it's a very touching story, but you made something out of it, you know. It made you realize where you wanted to be. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So another question would be, um, what uh which university did you go to what did you pursue there and why did you want to pursue what you pursued so i went to the university of zambia by default okay um my mom used to have a friend called ruth harris and when mom passed away ruth harris found me a scholarship to go and study interior design i i, I love doing interior design even at that early age and so she found me a scholarship, okay, to go to the United States and uh, study interior decorating at a degree level. But my guardian then, my aunt May, was just uh, she was not having it. She was saying, why do you want to go to America? You just want to travel. This university here, University of Zambia, is as good as any other university in the world. You are going to go there. And besides, what career would you have mm -hmm. if you go and study interior design and interior decorating? You are going to the University of Zambia. And so there I was uh, forced to go to the University of Zambia, totally disillusioned. And I really had no interest in anything there. I saw one of my guardians came and sat with me and said, look, whether you, you, you like it or not, you're not going to America, so just find something to do. This will, will stand you in good stead in future years, and at least you'll have a degree. And thereafter, if you want, you can go to America. Yeah. So I said, okay, um, at that early age, I still liked service, I liked working with people. So I said, I'll do public administration mm -hmm. and uh, at my at major, mm -hmm. and then I minored with uh, economics. Okay. And so that's exactly what I did. Okay, wow, amazing. So even if you were made to study what you really, you didn't really want, you still made like something be out of it, you yeah, know? Yeah, <laughs> because I enjoyed public administration. I yeah. think it was, it, it very much speaks to what my passion is today. And so I'd, maybe I didn't even real, realize it then, but it was something that I really enjoyed. Public service, organization, management, you know, governance issues and stuff like that. So it was really good. Amazing, amazing story. So, um, what was your first job after university and what did you get to learn from it that has shaped you to be the person that you are today? Wow, I held so many jobs while at university. Oh, wow. okay. So, in my second year, I, be, I did uh, vacation work with uh, Zambia National Commercial Bank okay. in the waste department. <laughs> That was what it was called then. Yeah, no, okay. I think today it would be credit admin or something like that. So I did okay. that. So every holiday I used to go to Zanaco for like a year, a year and a half or so. And this was uh, at Center Branch, which is very next to ShopRite on Carroll Road. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then after that, I worked with Hybrid Poultry Farm. And I was with Hybrid until I even graduated from the University of Zander. So I used to work during holidays. A girl has got to eat, a girl, you know? you know, girl has needs, yes. okay? and you, you, one of the biggest um, challenges you have when you come from a broken home is that you are shunted from one house to the other to the other and really getting down to us for people to look at your needs was also difficult. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you don't always want to go with a begging bowl. Okay? Exactly. So I decided I'll just be working and uh, fend my way and yeah. that's exactly what I did. So the last job was at Hybrid, and then when I graduated, my first real job was with the Zambia State Insurance Corporation, where I was hired as a management trainee, mm -hmm. working for uh, AutoCare at the time, mm -hmm. which was a subsidiary, and that was my first encounter with gender bias, because mm -hmm. AutoCare is uh, full of 
was full of men, panel beaters, mechanics, painters, what have you. Not a single female in sight. I was the female. And there was no manager then. And so I was hired as the acting workshop manager. <laughs> wow. Straight Strength. into a leadership role. And I'm like, Lord, what's going to happen to me? You know? So anyway, so what, have these job, what did these jobs teach me? Very much about, I uh, learned a lot about um, collaboration, mm -hmm. teamwork, and the fact that, you know, to be good, yeah. you needed your people around you, okay? Yeah. And people who were willing to share with you, willing to teach you, provided you also willing to learn and to ask the questions. I learned the, the importance of communication, open communication, and the realization that if you don't ask, you never know. Okay? So those were things that I learned. And at hybrid especially, I also learned the importance of speaking up, you know, because sometimes we just assume people know these things and they say, no, but why did you speak up? You know, we would have told you what to do. So I, I, I decided that I should be speaking up, I should be asking, I should be learning, I should be growing. So that, those are things that I learned in my first year. That's really amazing because, you know, most of us are brought up in such a way whereby speaking up is kind of you know controversial yeah. but then um we get to learn like after university how important it is and i'm glad you've brought it up right. and um, i hope people out there are uh, you know learning that we need to be speaking up you know yeah. we shouldn't just assume that people know what's in our mind exactly yeah thank yeah. you so much for that another question would be um how has been now your career path from that first job to now where you are you can maybe summarize that for us. <laughs> yeah, um, I've had a very interesting career and I really thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Because when I decided, uh, when I left AutoCare, I, I joined the public relations department at uh, ZISC and I did that for a few years. I graduated in 83 and I left the department in about 88 and I joined business development and in 1989 I went to Citibank. Citibank came hunting and I accepted their role. They asked me... So I, they literally came to you and yes, they want you? They, they said they wanted me. Wow, they were, I want that. They were came <laughs> hunting, yeah. yeah. And at that time I was a, an assistant manager. Nice. In marketing You've been department. a manager, manager all this while. <laughs> you know, God has been gracious. You, you know? know, He realized He had to be nice to me because I was a little lost after my mom died. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see. So, um, when they came and asked me to join uh, Citibank, that is, they asked me to join as an executive trainee. I said, Lord, I've been a manager, an assistant manager, now I must go back to being an executive trainee. Yeah. So they said to me, we'll give you, we'll confirm you and give you a promotion in two years. Okay. So, you know, just don't worry about the title. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make sure you just deliver on the job. Come and get trained and do the job as best as you can. So lesson number one, eh? It's not always about the title. Exactly. It's about the job. It's not about the title, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So... I, I thought about it a little bit more. Then they said, and your salary will be three times what you're earning now. I said, okay, what? where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> at that time, you yeah. were still looking at money. I was yeah. a single parent as well. I'd become a single parent okay. in 86. Okay. So I said, oh, sure, let's do this. So I joined Citibank, and within two years, I was made head of credit admin. Wow. Yeah. And that's how I transitioned from state insurance to um, Citibank to Citibank yeah okay and then from Citibank okay so from Citibank <laughs> you know I'm now in my memory lane from Citibank I went to um, where did I go from Citibank I went to a, a bank called Chase Trust Bank it was a local bank by a Mr. Siam and his colleagues they had some American uh, share shareholders I was there for only six months Okay. because uh, I realized that uh, perhaps I don't made the right uh, the right move 
So when Barclays Bank came knocking, so I, Barclays came yes, knocking. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> even even Chase Trust Bank they came knocking. Really? So when Barclays they knocked at the same time. Okay. Barclays Bank and Chase Trust. But I went with Chase Trust thinking, okay, let me support an indigenous bank mm. and I saw the opportunity to rise much faster in that organization as well. And I'm sure these people coming to you it meant that you were delivering such a good um, job where you were. Yeah, and, and that's one lesson we all need to learn. The, the quality of your work will speak for you. Mm -hmm. So do the best that you can because your job will speak for you. You know. Yeah. So they would say if you need such and such a play, uh, worker, try Charity Lumpa. She's good at ABCD. Nice. So that's always important. Yeah. So anyway, Chase Trust, six months later, I jumped ship and I joined um, the Barclays Bank. And I was chief risk manager, first female to have held that role as well. Wow. And I was there up until 2000 when I, I was um, moved laterally to a different department, retail banking, and I became uh, head of retail banking, retail, head of retail performance for the Southern Cluster, meaning Lusaka, Mumwa, Mongu, all the way down to Livingston and Chipata. That was my region. And I stayed there until 2002 when I became um, headhunted again by Standig Bank wow. to set up the retail bank here in Zambia. So, roll back a few years, when I turned 30, I sat myself down before the Lord and I said, where are we going? <laughs> what are we doing, Lord? I mean, what is this? Just changing jobs? What are we you gonna know? be doing? Yeah. So he says, What do you want to do? I, I like that. He said, What do you yeah, want to do? Yeah, <laughs> I have conversations <laughs> with the Lord. That's a whole conversation. Yeah, right I said, there. No, no, I sit him down. I have yeah. a chair for me in my bedroom. <laughs> sit here, let's talk. What yeah. is this? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. So he said, So I so he says, What do you want to do? I said, I want to be a CEO by the time I'm 40. Mm -hmm. So it's done. So what's I got to do with me? <laughs> I said, okay, but give me a few tips here. It's <laughs> okay, work hard. Yeah, you know. Go for those jobs that will put you, that will make you eligible to be considered a CEO. I said, wow. Okay, I prayed about it. I've, I, but, but this time I've, I've entered into roles at a director level. Okay. Mm. So I said, no problem, I can do that. I said, yeah. So all the best to you. I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. And so in 2002, I got uh, invited to apply for a job at Zambia National Tourism Board to be the CEO. Okay. And I said, hmm, this sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looks like a dream over here. <laughs> yeah, this is going to work. And I like. And I've got to be a CEO by the time I'm 40, and I was just knocking on 40 that time, <laughs> knocking hard on the door. Yeah. Long story short, I got hired as MD wow. for Zambia National Tourism uh -huh. just before I turned 41. So officially, really, I was 40. <laughs> yeah. And I became a CEO. I took a salary cut. Lost two thirds of my salary again. You see, it's not about money. Mm -hmm. But what was I gaining? I was gaining a CEO room. I was gaining uh, conditions of service that saw me have a car, company car, company home. Oh, and by then I'd already bought my first house because wow. I said by the time I'm thirty, I should buy a house. So what am I telling you? Make goals. You know? Set goals, no matter mm. how lofty they may be. I mean, at that age, where would I even think I would get money to buy a house and stuff like that? But I said, I'm going to work at it. It's going to work out one day. And I bought a house, a beautiful house. And the, the, the beauty of it all, oh, why it was beautiful, it was not so much that it looked good, I could have done better. But because it had a tenant, and the tenant was Zesco, so I was getting double income. <laughs> so I was very okay. pleased with myself. Wow. Yeah. So I bought a house and then so 40, I'm CEO. And being CEO, in fact, I, I, I roll back again. Let's talk about dreams, objectives, and putting them in alignment. So when I became head of retail bank and uh, head of retail at Standing Bank, they asked me, um, 
what I was expecting. You know the usual salary discussions, and I yes. told them these are my expectations, and 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 and, and they even beat whatever my expectations really? were. Really? And they asked me if you want to, but this is your car um, allocation. You go and buy yourself a car. Or it's up to you. I went straight to Marunucci then. Went and bought a brand new Mercedes Benz off the showroom. And I said, Girl, you've arrived. Showroom, not, not even. <laughs> she never ordered it online. No, 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 no. She no, went no. With the showroom. The, this is the car I want. <laughs> yeah. And I bought the car. At, you know, took out the plastics myself. Man, it's such a great feeling. You know. But it can't beat buying a house though. Okay. So I did taking two great things <laughs> by yeah. that time. Okay. So I went and bought this car. So by the time I was going to the Zambia National Tourism Board, I was even given another car, you see. So it's, it's all really fully aligned because I had a plan for my life. I had goals and I was ready to put in the work. Okay, I'm a, I was a single mother then. I, I'd become a single mother. And the challenges that came with being a single mother were also there. But that should not deter anybody work at it i'm not saying it's easy no i don't subscribe to that but it is not insurmountable and can be done so from uh standing bank i went to state uh, to zambia national tourism board as it was known then then my contract ended in december 2007 and i opted not to renew it because the the company was now becoming a department in the ministry oh okay. yeah i i want to swim in big oceans i want to be like a shark because you grow in the big ocean so i didn't think continuing in the department was going to give me that ocean and for me i was all about growth okay mm -hmm. so i decided not to take that and uh, in january itself ecobank came knocking and asked me to be the project manager in zambia for ecobank to set up their Greenfield Financial Institution as Zambia branch and I said yeah bring it on what did I know about setting up a bank but I just said you know what so you took it up without even knowing what no I did, had no idea what so it you were entailed. ready to put in the work I'll even before you always know ready to put in the work always ready to learn take on new challenges so I said, yeah, bring it on. I was shaking in my boots, but I said, you know what, we got to do this, girl. You know? So I went, Uncle Gugu came to help. Yeah. I did all the research. I, I was flown to West Africa, where our regional office is. I spoke to some people, and I started. I was the only member of, uh, of parliament, only <laughs> member of staff. Yeah. Speaks about my, my recent political. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So the only member of staff, plus my driver. Okay. So in, um, I think it was now June, July, we submitted the application. I did the feasibility study and everything else. I learned everything off Google. And it was the best feasibility study that Ecobank had ever seen. Wow. You've got to apply yourself. Wow. Yeah. And so I went to um, submit the application at the central bank, six months, record time. And within the year, they gave us the license. And so August 2009, EcoBank Zambia was born and opened its doors to the public. Wow. So this I stayed there. Yeah, I stayed in um, EcoBank Zambia as MD until August 2012. And strangely enough, I was living next door. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> so you actually tried to just come back? I just tried to come back. So uh -huh. I went, I, I, I went to... Togo. I was okay. transferred to Togo, to Lome, where the head office is, to set up the credit admin unit to work across the 32 African countries at the time, so that we could manage our credit risk portfolio. Um, I was quite homesick. I've never worked anywhere other than in Zambia. And I just didn't see myself working anywhere else but Zambia. Did, did you travel with uh, your child? Then? Yeah, yeah. My child was always in school, but she she traveled okay. with me. Yeah, as my dependent. Okay. But I went anyway to Lome, and I, I was just so unsettled, and I just said, Lord, you've got to deal with this one. This one is beyond my pay grade. So, 
this one, you who raises people from the dead are going to do this for me. Amen. Yeah. And so <laughs> February, uh, was it February? January. Uh-huh. January 2013. Eto came knocking. So these this, this people just come knocking and say, you know what? <laughs> we need you. We're talking about brand. Yeah. Okay. You know, develop yeah, yeah. your brand, mm-hmm. your personal brand. Yeah. It's about you, your work, your up. It's got nothing else but you. And they came knocking and I took the job. That was uh, March. I was back here in April and uh, retired in 2015. I found that I just lost steam. <laughs> I realized, you know, I'd been pushing, pushing, you know, pushing. Yeah. I said, let's do something different now. Okay, I, I just, I found myself forcing myself to get up in the morning to go to work. And that's not a good feeling. And therefore, I was not giving my best. I didn't think I would be. And I decided, no, let's uh, step aside. Yes. Let's retire. So I put up my hand and I said, sure, no problem. But why so soon? I said, I things to do. And I really wanted to retire at 50, but I just had one or two things that were not in place and I couldn't retire. So long story short, I, I retired in 2015 and I said I want to take a break, a sabbatical so called, for a year. After that I want jobs that would help me work with people directly. You know in these jobs uh, I held, we, we had huge CSR budgets, but the people were not really benefiting it's, it's like a project and then you move on, a project and then I wanted to constantly do that to help people, you mm. know, to overcome poverty, to overcome the, 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 I don't want to call it stigma, the limitations that women think they have about being professional and rising up. I wanted to work with women and I wanted to motivate them. So uh, I said I'll take a year, six months first. Six months came and wait. I said, okay, maybe a year. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, you were enjoying what you were doing. I was certainly enjoying myself, <laughs> and here we are today. But what kept me uh, grounded, really, to the to, to this country more is that these are the things I wanted to do. So in February or March 2015, uh, Zanako came knocking, and they asked me to interview for uh, to be a board member. Okay, a director on the board. And I said, sure. I was just coming, I was in hospital at the time, I was having an operation. Sorry, and when they called me, I was, they said, day I was discharged. And they said, can you come tomorrow for an interview? I said, Lord, yes, I've <laughs> Are you being serious? You actually went? Mm-hmm. Did they know that? No, they, I just had to hold it together. Up to now, did they know about it? I told them afterwards. Yes, oh my. I told them afterwards. The day, I, the day after I was discharged, I was sitting in the boardroom at Zanako, wow. being interviewed to be a board member. And it's in that interview they said, but would you mind being a chair? No. Wow. I said, well, I didn't come ready to discuss being a chairman, but hey, why not? He said, sure, well, you're a new chair. I said, thank you. It, and it, that's how it works. That's how it was, simple as that. And in the following month, April, at the AGM, I was approved as a board member and was a, the board, board chair. chairperson. Yeah, I call myself board chairman. Oh, be- board chairman, yeah. It's a title. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's like yeah. president. <laughs> it's like minister. Exactly. So why is it when a woman takes on these roles, you want now to change? Uh, no, no, no. I definitely didn't even know that. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why does the world want to change, change it? You it's know? chairman. It's board chairman. If I become president of this country, would you call me presidentess? <laughs> you know, no, I understand. It's, so I call myself chairman. It's board the role. Chairman, yeah. It's like mayor. So, so what's the role of a board chairman? So the role of a board chairman is an interesting one, okay? Mm-hmm. It's you, you are one amongst equals. Okay. Of all the board members, you are all equal. Mm-hmm. Except there's always a team leader, and that's what I was a team leader okay. to guide the the board to build the bridge between management and the board uh, the board itself mm-hmm. to enhance policy, to enhance collaboration, to bring in that visibility, and ensure above all else that there is strong governance in the organization. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I I need to be a role model mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm 
demanding X of management, I should know I'll be able to do that myself. So the, the chairman's role is quite a pivotal role and a very important one. And especially as regards ensuring a great and robust relationship between the CEO and the board. That's mm -hmm. important. Yeah. I see. Interesting. Seems like a lot of work, but... Uh... No, it seems a it. lot of work. It's also dealing with a lot of emotions and understanding that whatever you do, especially as chair, you have to put that message down time and again. Whatever is done at the board is in the best interest of the organization. Wow. Very powerful. All right. So um, what would you say? You know, you've achieved so many things, you know, for one person, one human being. <laughs> So what would you say has been your greatest achievement out of all of these things? Being a great mother to my daughter. Aww. Yeah, I have a daughter. Okay. And um, I had a great relationship with my mom. Okay. I remember that much. And I thought that's the thing I want to have the most with my daughter. So that I raise a strong, courageous young lady. Wow. Yeah, that's my greatest achievement. Career-wise, career-wise, all of my jobs have been my greatest achievement. All of them, because each one taught me something different. And I still believe that the best is still ahead of me. I haven't arrived yet. Yeah. Yeah. But building Ecobank Zambia from the ground up, would definitely be listed as one of my greatest achievements. So I would don't have one. Mm -hmm. I have several. Yes, several. Yes. You, know, you just can't point at one. You're like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have one. My second greatest achievement is my, no, my first actually. Echo Bank is number three. My daughter number two. Number one is my my journey. My deep conviction as a child of God, you know, that for me is my greatest achievement. The circumstances under which my mother died made me believe there's no God, okay? There can't be a God who can allow me not to have a mother and yeah, to no. lose her in such a manner. And for, I battled with that for many, many years until I think I was about 16, thereabouts, when I just gave my life to God and said, look, I've been resisting you all these years, but now, here yeah, I am. I think for me that was my greatest achievement. It was easy to get lost in here. Yeah. You know, the mind is such a powerful thing. And um, I, I can see why a lot of people despair because we go in our head. And once you are in your head, every scenario that is bad will come to you if you allow it. And I did for many years. And then I realized this is not the way. If what I want to achieve in life is X, Y, Z, I can't continue like this. I was always angry. I was, you know, frowning. I was not happy. It's just that I, I, I found every reason to be unhappy or not to do anything. Fortunately, God gave me great brains and I excelled at school. That's why I even managed to go to the University of Zambia. And I said, I can't continue like this. I said, Lord, forgive me. Show me the way. Yeah. That realization that I was on the wrong path, having the wrong attitude, being angry, sucky, always annoyed, was not doing it for me. And I said, this is not going to continue anymore. Mm -hmm. That, for me, is my biggest achievement ever. Because for far too often, we find that we give in to our emotions, our thinking, and we use that as, a, as an excuse not to do anything. Pity parties. Yeah. You know, no, me, my mother died, no, me, my father this, no, me, that, no, this, no. I said, girl, you got to get a hold of yourself. You've got the Lord telling you, fear not, I'm with you. I'll be with you all the time, and I'll shine my light on your path. Get working. And that's exactly what I did. Wow, that's very amazing. As Sarah Jack says, girl, you got to get up. You need to stop giving excuses, you know. Yeah, yeah, the greatest absolutely. achievement is actually knowing that, she says her greatest, her greatest achievement is knowing that, you know, I should stop uh, having that self-pity 
rise above the challenge and you know go for it my go greatest achievement yeah. is knowing god yeah her greatest achievement is knowing god yes knowing god guys you need to know your god and you need to create a personal relationship with him just as, the, as she says you know she talks to him sits him down say you know what i'm planning this and he's like go ahead that's really amazing. Yeah. You need to take note of that. Absolutely. So uh, another question, uh, as we come to the conclusion of the program, uh, what advice would you give to uh, your 20 year old self? Yeah, I've been thinking about that for a while. Don't despair. In this world, we shall have failures. We shall Things not go the way we want them to go, but they should not define you. God is always there for you. And when you fall, get up, don't stay down. Because when you stay down, you are totally failing. So get up. I'm not saying it's easy. Mm -hmm. I'm saying get up. And when you get up, you just find that you're even stronger because you got up. When you remain down, I believe you continue being weak. So 20 years old, get up, my girl get going wow that's really amazing so it's a matter of getting up no matter how how many times you fall down you need to get back up so um i know we said we're concluding but just two last questions um what do you do in your free time <sighs> right <laughs> <laughs> last time i watched you saying that you watch east enders i was so about to say <laughs> I, I, I still watch east enders <laughs> Okay, I don't watch it every day. What I do is I record it. Okay. And then I choose a month. Okay, oh, when okay. it's really, when I, I've got no planned a, a calendar ahead in that month, yeah. and I know that I'll be fairly free. Yeah. But then I use Sundays mostly. I don't really do it during the week. So I, I watch it senders like marathon from morning to <laughs> evening. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what it's about. I'm sure right now people are going to now like look it up to say, okay, I think I need to watch this maybe to be successful. Yeah, it's a soap. Not really. It, it, it's my downtime. It's a soap I started watching in 1988 when I wow. went to London to do my diploma in um, marketing management. Yeah. So that's what I, I, I liked enjoying when I was in London because it was cold then and you spend more time inside the house and there was this program which I liked, East Enders and Home and Away, but Home and Away doesn't come here, so I just like East Enders. Okay. I like to read. Mm -hmm. I haven't been very good in the past couple of years because of the nature of what I, I'm, I've been doing. Yeah. I like to cook. Nice. Yeah, I enjoy cooking. I also just like to be you know, doing nothing, just sitting there. You do some quiet time. Just some downtime, some quiet time, enjoying myself. I can see the trees. Yeah, you. You thanking really like God your... <laughs> for his blessings, yeah. Yeah. checking in with him. It's it's just, you, you know, we've got to make time for self. We, mm -hmm. we, we are always pushing, pushing, pushing an agenda. And far too often you find that in pushing that agenda you are pleasing a lot of people but hardly yourself mm -hmm. so find time to come back and mm -hmm. recalibrate yeah. and see what else can be done out there and yeah so that's what i do for um in my free time yeah but i'm a consultant mm -hmm. I'm, i don't do things widely i, I i'm actually sort if, if they if you come and look for me i'll do it so I don't go looking for it. I don't okay, know if it, yeah, make, if, I, it, yeah. if it makes sense because I'm just trying to enjoy my 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 age group. Yeah. Uh, I'll be turning sixty in um, in February. You don't say. You don't even look anything. To me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to start taking things a little bit easier. I serve on a number of boards as well, mm -hmm. um, and. I'm also trying now to go back to my foundation, which I started in 2019. As I, I started, is it 20? Where are we? 2021. I started in 2020. Okay, so that's when I you. started my political activities because okay. I wanted to use it as the engine to touch the people, to reach mm, the people, reach as opposed to using the political structures. Yeah. So when I was not adopted, I put it on hold for a little while hoping that I can pick it up again in early 2022. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, okay, so the last question is, um, you know, you've reached so far in your life. Do you plan on mentoring young people? 
So working hand in hand with young people. No, I don't plan on mentoring young people. <laughs> I actually do it. Oh, wow. And I've nice. been doing it for I don't know how long. Seriously? Yes. Wow. So I have a, a, a small coaching business on the side. Okay. So when people ask me to help them, mm -hmm. to coach them or to mentor them, we I do that with them. So how do people reach out to you if they want to be mentored by you? Well, people know how to find me. <laughs> Okay, so I can give you my email address. I can uh, my telephone number, no, of course, but certainly my email address. Yes, yeah, so I I do coach. I don't coach for free because I actually went and got certified as a coach. I'm an okay. executive coach, mm -hmm. but I do know there are some young ladies, some young men who might not be able to afford my services that I do pro bono as part of my charity work. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's really amazing. Um, what last words would you have to say to? Okay, most of our audience are students, but you can generalize it to just young people. What advice would you have for them as we conclude? It's possible to achieve whatever you want, whatever you set out to do, but it's not going to happen automatically or by magic. Mm -hmm. You've got to put in the work, you've got to plan. Mm -hmm. I think I've indicated throughout our discussions that for me nothing happened by chance. I planned everything. I didn't always get whatever I planned for. But at the end of the day I was always left better off than if I had not if I had not planned. So always plan whatever you want to do. Challenges will be there. Don't get discouraged. Don't lose hope. And they say keep trying three times. If at first you don't succeed, try again. Try again. Try again. If it doesn't work, find another way or change what you are trying to achieve and move on. You see, the way up is not always in this upward trajectory. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go like that, then you go up, then you sometimes you go down, then you come up again. So the trajectory is not always well known, but keep focused on that up. Even if you go like this, you're looking up because that's where you want to be. And it's hard. I won't lie, it's hard. But imagine the joy, the sweetness of your victory when you get there. When you get to this milestone, then the next. And set milestones. Huh? Don't just go chim, do no plan. Have a plan. Make sure you set milestones. By 30, I must do this. I wanted a house for me. By 30, I must buy a house. I bought a house. When I retired, I said I must retire in my own home. I bought a home. This is my own home wow. from my retirement benefits. Wow. I owe nobody in rent here. No, <laughs> they owe so me. Wake up, get your swimming pool, whatever. Time. Exactly. <laughs> so it's it's really about planning your way such that you sacrifice now, so that you can come and live like I'm living today. I did a lot of sacrifices. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So that I can be able to afford my own home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. be able to put food on the table, to be able to jump into my car and go where I want to go. If I want to travel abroad, I say at least I can afford an economy ticket and go wherever I want, I can afford a hotel. That for me is success, mm -hmm. to be able to eat, to drink, whatever you want, and at the end of the day, to sleep at night without any worries. For me, that is success. And to know that God checking it and say yes, You've got it, girl. Do it. So it's important that we plan, we set goals, and work towards achieving them. Don't just put the goal and say, Ah, Kaya, one in Zambia. Dora na shupa. And that's every statement. Yeah, yeah, we know. Yes, things are much harder perhaps today than they, than they were when I was growing up. But we still had the same challenges. I walked the streets to find a job every single day. I would apply for a job until I got it. And I used no connections. I did it on my own. You know? Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Charity, for coming on the show. Uh, for me, I think uh, my takeaway message would be, you know, put God first. Mm -hmm. Have that personal relationship with Him. Talk to Him, actually. <laughs> Sit Him down and have that conversation. And also set goals, you know. Don't just move anyhow. Set goals and know what you want to really achieve. 
and of course sometimes it will be hard but you just need to keep pushing and you need to look up you know as she said don't don't look down you need to look up you need to keep going up of course at times when the, the trajectory will go down but you need to keep going up thank you so much for joining us You're today welcome, i'm thank sure many lives me. many lives will be touched by your story and thank you thank you so much Thank you very much. We have come to the end of the show. My name is Florence Jedidayam Lenga. See you next time.